Hello and welcome to the Gaming Chronicles. Today we will continue Final Fantasy V, the Pixel Remaster. So let's fire it up. <clears throat> Alrighty, in our previous episode, we... Let's see. Let's load it up. I think we finished the Library of the Ancients. And... Yeah, we're done with the Library of the Ancients. Now... Okay, we've got to hot foot it back up to Karnak. Because uh, we have found Mid, grandson of Sid, and we um, have kind of let him know that uh, his grandpa is in a very deep depression, a deep blue funk, if you will, and needs some motivation. So um, his grandson Mid is on his way to Karnak to cheer him up. Or something like that. Alright, so let's get home. Not home. Let's get back to town. And... <clears throat> we'll just head straight up to the pub. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Before I forget, let's uh, stock up on rods. Just I like to have uh... There we go. I like to have three of each on hand. I don't remember if from this point onward off the top of my head, um that uh if oh derp, why am I exiting town? If we're gonna need them, I'd have to look through my notes to um to find out. But like I said, I, I just like to have them on hand. Okay, let's go upstairs. And... Looks like we beat Mid back to Karnak. Well, it kind of makes sense, though. Mid is, uh... If we go by the, um... If we go by the concept art illustrations, Mid is not very tall. I don't know if he's even considered to be a grown adult. Um... But he's uh, he's short in stature compared to like, our, you know, our main party members. Because um, to my to my memory, um, Mid looks kind of boyish, like he's uh, I don't know, maybe a teenager, um, something like that. Oh come on, Sid, it'll be okay. And we're all standing around like, uh, what do we do now? And here comes Mid. Mid? It looks like he has a bowl cut. I think he does have a bowl cut. And we're witnessing some abuse of the elderly. Stop that, stop that! <laughs> that's, uh, that's highly disrespectful to your elders. Well, maybe, but, uh, I mean... Who, who better than to... <laughs> inspire the um, inspire Sid than his own grandson. So the question is, where are Sid's parents? Where do they live? Right? Where are they? And Mid is um, echoing Sid's own words back at him. Try again. Never be afraid of failing. Never, 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 never give up. Right? Wise words. Just try again. You're absolutely right. See, it just had to be said by the right person. Because we could have said it all day long, and Sid would have said, Don't bother with an old, worthless old lump like me. Sometimes grandkids just have to inspire the grandparents. Uh, yeah, where? That's a good question, Bartz. We don't know. We'll need the fire-powered ship. All right. Way ahead of you, Gramps. All right, so we open the book and Mid's found out some cool stuff. And it looks like they've found a solution to the problem. No fire crystal, no problem. We'll get her going. All righty. 
lots of nodding and uh, good vibes now all around. We're all getting hyped up again. Sid gets us one last nod. Thank you. No, thank you, Sid. Alrighty, let's go. Now we can exit town and board the fire powered ship. Alright, let's just hop right on and get more cutscenes out of the way. Hey, mate, what's up? Whoa, hello. Okay. No worries, I'll just chill out here. He's all fired up. Okay. Um, that's great. So we'll just come down to the cabin. Hang out by the chart. And now Gallif is looking a little bit... Hmm. <laughs> Stranger than usual. What does that mean? Gallif. Gallif. Gallif is deep in thought. He... Could it be? His memories are coming back. I think so. So now, thanks to our um, intervention with Mid um, inspiring Sid, he has also helped trigger the memories of Gallif and his own granddaughter, Kryal. Even the um, slapping on. I don't think Mid is tall enough to hit Sid's face, so he's probably doing the whole thing where, like, you know, little kids, they run up with their fists and they, like, you know, pound on the adults, either, like, their legs or torsos, however high they can reach. Um, this, uh, <laughs> uh, this conversation inspires, uh, or not inspires, but reminds Gallif, sparks a memory of Gallif, where Kryl is doing the same thing to him. So, see that. See? Small children don't just do this in our own universe and our own world. They do it everywhere in the universe and across dimensions. Uh, so, it doesn't matter where you are. Children will behave the same. Cryal. Aha! I remember. Yes, he did. And here we have, not of this world, what? And of course, now we put it together that, ah, oh, the meteorite that we found him at, that was actually sent from another world, and the opening cutscene makes more sense, and so do the other meteorites that landed, we're like, oh, so the other meteorites came there too, and uh, so a lot comes together here, right, if you're playing through this the first time. And then we're about to hear, you know, now, now we're getting more plot exposition and um, the evil that we had sealed away 30 years ago came here to stop it. Um, and Bart's, of course, the, the master of repeating um, what other people say in the form of a question. Um, and then we have finally the name of the game's antagonist dropped. X death. Yep. Um, on a rating of one to lame, um, <laughs> X death is better than zero mus, I think. Mostly because you at least get used to it. I, I think because you know, yeah. I, I've, um, I think I've expressed my expressed my gripes with the fact that in Final Fantasy IV, you're misdirected of who the actual true villain is until almost the very end and here you know that yeah x death he truly is the villain um and i think this may be the first this might be the first final fantasy where you know the actual villain who the villain is so soon i mean yeah we've we've had quite a journey so far but um but compared to the previous four final fantasies you're learning who the actual antagonist is 
um, you know, behind all the evil and everything quite early. Um, and I think that's just part of Japanese st storytelling, right? You know, um, Japanese storytelling often reveals, like when you're revealing a major plot point, um, when it comes to a good versus evil type of a story, I think those, you know, the, the, a storyteller, a master storyteller will try and reveal that, you know, pull that curtain back. Who, who's the big bad guy as late as possible. Now to, you know, people playing a video game that might not be as attractive as a, um, as a feature or as a, um, as something to implement into the plot or the story, just because you want to know who you're fighting. <laughs> you typically, you want to know who you're going up against. You want to know who is behind that curtain more, you know, sooner than five minutes before you're about to beat the game. Um, it's not that dramatic, but you get the point. Anyway, Gallif remembers that we have to stop X death. Can't be revived. Remembers Kryle, his granddaughter. So these are very important things. And of course, it's just too much for him. So he collapses. And he's going to take a little bit of a nap. And speaking of taking naps, we find Sid and Mid um, sawn logs on the on the deck. They're pretty tired. They've been hard at work fixing the ship up so that we can uh, cruise it around without the need of wind. Slept like a top. That is an expression that I am truly not familiar with. Um, so... If that is an expression from the 80s or the 90s, I was never familiar with that one. Just saying. We are so awesome. Uh, I would agree. Uh, that, that's pretty... Whatever he did was pretty ingenious. I think it's implied that uh, it's steam-powered. Like with the... Uh, just the, the, the pipes coming up. They look like steam pipes. Um, it's probably not... I don't know. It could be combustion. You don't. We don't know because we can't go back down to the... Uh, boiler room now whenever we board the ship we come straight to the uh, or yeah we don't we don't we can't go into like the cabin area or anything like that we can't go actually inside the ship all right let's go why is Bart's at the helm I guess probably because well no because he's the one that's speaking anyway so now we've got a ship uh, and okay, so on, so I want to point something out here. They they engineer the ship, and then they do so without giving us any kind of guidance um, or user manual uh, or it's like okay, we've uh, we've made the ship so that you can sail it without. Um, the need of uh, sails or wind, but <laughs> that's it. It's like, okay, go ahead, go about your merry way. Just go ahead and drive off, right? Uh, it, it's like um, if someone who has never driven a, I don't know, I, I don't want to say someone who's never driven a car before, but maybe someone who's driven a car, but then it's completely redesigned, um, and you don't give them the user manual. It's like, well, I hope it just works out for the best. Like, you have a general idea of, okay, I still know how to, I know how to steer the ship and everything. And, um, and, and anyway, I'm getting way, you know, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm overanalyzing this. I know, but, uh, oh, you know what we forgot to get? Um, let's go back up to Karnak real quick. We need tents. We do not have any tents, and we're gonna need, we're gonna need some. Uh, casting Gaia in, when we're on the boat is kind of like, wow, well, whatever. Um, because it's either Tsunami or Whirlpool. And, you know, Tsunami's great, of course, because that does good damage to everything. Um, but I think, like, not all of the enemies are weak to Lightning. Sahagans are, I believe... But the Thunder Anemones, what are they weak, weak to? I don't know. Um, 
Are they weak to are they weak to water? All right, Lena mastered white magic level five. That's fantastic. Okay, let's come back up here, get some tents. And I think I mentioned how um, I used uh, tents very little in. Ooh, kind of expensive. I guess let's get. Five. We have eleven Phoenix Downs. Oh, we need potions. Just Yeah, let's just get those. Uh I don't think we'll need mallets. But we'll get a few. That should do us. Um we'll get more gold needles in the future for a certain part, but we don't need those yet. Okay, we just mostly needed tents. Walked away with a lot more stuff. Kind of like shopping at Costco. You go in for one thing, you end up buying $300 worth of groceries. Uh, and other things. Okay. Um... What are Thunder and enemies weak to? I don't remember. Let's... Is it fire? I, I'm curious now, because I don't remember. Because thunder they absorb, I believe. Well, fire didn't do much to them. Alright, and they always drop lightning scrolls, which is fantastic. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to, you can... Um... Oh. Um, you can farm the thunder and enemies for, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, for lightning scrolls, um, if you don't want to, if you didn't want to buy them. Alrighty. Okay, so, of course, they did mention, you know, stop by the Library of Ancients if you don't know where to go. Well, of course we don't know where to go. Um, Professor Stid has returned. Alright, so if we go over here and talk to them... Can't through a, find a darn thing. Uh, and of course, they are enjoying their time together as grandson and grandfather. A crescent-shaped island. Hmm, sounds scratchy. Alrighty, so that's the hint we get. Um, so, we, we know we need to go to the crescent-shaped island. Okay, let's go in here. And... Okay, we're going to go ahead and go to one of the prototype islands. So I've got to think here for a second. Um, we need Bart to be a blue mage. Oops. Uh, yep. But we need him to have control. We need Ferris. Um, we want you to be a blue or a white mage, Lena. But we also want you to have learn. Yeah, same with Gallif. Let's just change you so you have learn. And then... Steel is not going to do us much good against the prototypes. Um... But we have, um... But I want you to be a blue mage, so that, um, yeah, I want you to be a blue mage still. So maybe time magic, maybe that'll be helpful, cast, uh, well, no, that doesn't matter because we're going to be using her blue magic, so let's just, we'll just keep still. Okay, so we only needed to change those few things. Okay, and my setup is probably different than, like, the... I don't know, the cookie cutter or the, the, the meta, um, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 
Let's see if we can steal some, uh... Let's see, uh, let's do... Let's go ahead and take out that grass tortoise. Try to control you. Um. Don't know what the bee would be susceptible to, if anything. All right, it's fantastic. Oh no! I wanted to attack the bee. And black magic's not going to do us much good because it's a dragon. And. Ouch. Come on, control him. Get him. Get him. Uh, we're not set up very well for this fight because we got <laughs> two blue mages and a white mage and a black mage. No one with a lot of uh, melee power. So we'll drag this out. And Bart's effort to control is failing because I think Diminishing Returns does... Um, Ouch. Um, is factored in. Come on. Oh my goodness. That was ridiculous. Okay, let's get on the boat and head down to Prototype Island. Um, is there anything I can use on these guys. Oh yeah, let's use Vampire. That's good. Let's use some Thundara. Nice. Um, I don't know how much, how well Arrow will do. Let's, let's check it out. Let's see if this will do anything useful. I don't remember. Uh, not bad. All right. Uh, let's just do the same thing. A combination of Era and Thunder Thundara worked out pretty well. Oh, and that's not going to do diddly. All right, very good. All right, there are a couple of islands that we can go to. Um, haha, missed. I believe that. I don't know if. Uh... Okay, so the um, those sea ibises. They have a very high evasion rate, I believe it is. I don't remember if their defenses are high, but their evasion rate is very high. Preemptive strike. Uh, let's just run. I don't want to deal with these guys. Our whole purpose is to... Okay, let's... Let's, uh, let's save. Uh, let's see. We want... Yeah. Okay. I think we're ready. Oh, all right. Let's hope this works. Or not. Let's not. Let's hope this works. Rather, let's hope this is over quickly. Because these bad boys. Um, oh. Um. I think if we cast. 
Oh, we don't have it yet. Oh, man. Okay. I've got off guard, but man, that's expensive. Alright, so. Can I steal? Um. I stole an ether. Nice. Okay. Oh, wait. I don't want to control him. I want to. Okay, whatever. This is fine. Um. So, anyway. I did want to illustrate that missile can be learned from prototype. Um, we'll just, we could just shoot anybody and we'd learn it. Um, Self-destruct may not, um, because it can only target him. Blaster, um, we can use it on ourselves if we wanted to, um, but uh, that would be pointless because it's not a blue magic that we can learn, sadly, um, because that is an awesome ability. So anyway, the easiest way to, de to defeat them, and probably the best at this point, is to just cast self-destruct on themselves, and then they die. And it's good experience, but no gill. Um, four ability points, which is pretty dang good, considering how um, easy the battle is with control, provided that you get it. Um, because if it uses blaster and, and mustard bomb, Okay, so our whole purpose is to, honestly, it's just to survive. Um, I don't think that we have, um, let's see. Yeah, I don't think anything like Goblin Punch works. Um, yeah, because their, their defense is crazy high. Their magic defense is crazy high. Um, I'll go ahead and steal ethers from them all day, though. Nice! We got it. Okay. So, that is fantastic. So, now we will just go ahead and control, control, control. Um, okay, that's fortuitous. Because Blaster either, like, paralyzes or it uh, just outright... Um, Oh no, Bart's is down. I need to cast Asuna. I was going to say, no, I'll just uh, dink around here. No, I've got to get... Um, I've got to get him up so he can cast control. Um, defend, defend, attack. No, not attack, idiot. Control, there we go. Alright. Okay, everything is going to be fine now. And we'll just take this opportunity to... Appreciate that we got very good uh, flamethrower RNG. He even did us did us a solid and cast it twice on us. <laughs> and now we've learned flamethrower. Uh, it's one that's nice to have. We don't need it. Um, but uh, anyway, these these bad boys are also very good to farm, as we can see for experience and uh, ability points. Is like whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, an easy way to crank up your experience early on is coming and farming these guys because um, the, you know the control ability is fairly successful, and unless they start spamming blaster on you, uh, then usually you don't have too hard of a time. Um, and if you have tents to revive, you know, fallen members of your party, then usually that's just fine. I don't know if this island has them. Um, I think. One of these aisles does for sure. Um, so I can control him. <laughs> no. Uh, alrighty. So another way to fight that um, that guy, uh, the prototype, if you don't have control, is with uh, blue magic, uh, and and it is actually way harder. Uh, <laughs> if you've gotten um, dark spark. Um, in conjunction with, uh, actually, let's see, um, let's see if these islands also have the prototype. I can't remember if they all do. Okay, it looks like they do. We'll just go ahead and, uh, control and steal, steal that ether. Critical attack. Ouch. It's not bad, really. Alright, let's just go ahead and uh, do a little bit of self destruct action. 
Yeah, there we go. Couple of levels up. Nice. Getting experience, we're getting dark matter, we're getting ethers. Uh, this is good stuff. This is really good stuff. Okay, yep, more prototypes. Okay, it seems like, um, oh boy, okay. See, that's, that's when it can hurt. And we missed with our control. Ugh. Nope, missed again. Oh, wait, I forgot to steal. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, you're dead. Sorry, dude. Okay, there we go. And let's just go ahead and self-destruct. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Blaster misses if we try and cast it on himself. Yeah, just misses. Um, Alright, let's get uh, Gallop up. Did I steal? I can't remember if I stole from him or not. Nope, missed. Alright, let's destroy ourselves. Goodbye. Alright, and Lena levels up. Very nice. Okay. Alright, yeah, I'm pretty sure all these aisles are prototype aisles. Sea ibises. I really don't want to deal with them, so we're just going to run away. Uh, wait, what about this one? Does this one have different enemies? I think this one has different enemies. It might have bombs. Ah, no, this, is the, this has the same enemies as... Um, Uh, da da da, Crescent Isle. Will Flamethrower do? I don't know, I don't remember. We'll do this one. Let's control, try to control that soldier. Uh, let's try to get to Blizzara. Those double lizards are weird. They they literally have two heads. Uh, it's like, how does that even work? Um, yeah, see, so it turn and it, and it kind of gives the. I don't know. It kind of looks like it's gonna run away. Let's see what flamethrower does here. Yeah. Oh man, that was fantastic. Let's, we want we want more flamethrower. <laughs> Oh. That lizard should be down. The bio soldier. Okay, good. We got him down. The death sickle. Wow. Well, if we were using the uh, terrible class that is the uh, berserker, we would uh, definitely be... Uh, be equipping that. That's a rare drop right there. Um, let me see here. Steal from Harvesters and Black Flames. Okay, let's. So uh, we're not going to go in the town yet. We want to wander around because we're looking for Black Flames. Um. Probably, though, should switch my ability so that Lena can do some attacking. Uh... Because while this is fun and all, um, you know, shooting fire at uh, our enemies. It's not very, this is not a very um, efficient way of conducting combat. Oh, 
All right, there we go. Okay, abilities. Um, Gaia and abilities. Let's go back to Gaia, just so we can have the possibility of that earthquake procting. Uh, jobs. Um, let's go back to Ninja. Oops. Um, yeah, Ninja, and then uh, we do want control. Okay, yeah, there we go. Back to our kind of standard lineup for right now. Come on, where's that? Nope, that's not, this is not what we want. Uh, stole silver bow, very nice. Come on, get him. Let's see, uh, let's heal Bart. And that should finish him off. There we go, very nice. Okay, still looking for a Dark Spark. Not Dark Spark. Black Flame, so we can get the Dark Spark. Oh, come on. Do we have to look find him in a forest? I don't... I don't understand. Oh, that'll do. No, that's the Chocobo Forest. That we have they have to be here somewhere. Seriously. All right, let's uh Okay, that works. I'm really not trying to grind out experience right now, or trying to farm another of those one of those axes. <sighs> I swear the black flames are here. We might just have to get it somewhere else. We'll okay. We'll do three more encounters, and if we can't, if we can't, it, no, not even that. We'll do two more encounters. Two more encounters. And if we don't find a black flame, we'll just wait until we go to the history area. This is becoming dumb. Nice. That main... Gauch. Whatever it is. The stabby knife that blocks um, the blocks enemy attacks. Okay, one more, one more encounter. That's all we got. I swear there are black flames around here. Um, okay, we didn't get any. We didn't get a single one of them. Um, I didn't think that they were like a rare spawn. Maybe they are, I don't know. Because I've got in my notes that Black Flame is around the Crescent area. Another Death Sickle? That is nice. Um, okay, whatever, we're going in here. And upon arriving at Crescent... Oh no, it's another Earthquake. What? So confused, uh-oh. What the crap, the ship? <laughs> uh... Help me. And then we just kind of wander around. There's one more person. It's like, I'm scared. Obviously. Alright, so we try to leave town. Uh, but uh, sadly, the ship gets pulled out into this giant eddy maelstrom and sinks. And disappears to the bottom of the sea. <clears throat> well, we're hosed now. So let's walk around and talk to people. The island is blessed. Yeah, whatever you say. Nothing ever seems to need water. Well, that's nice for you. And this old guy that uh, we saw. 
Oh, that's good to know. You're... Yep, it was. <laughs> and then he just laughs at us like, this isn't the first time that this has happened. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, sorry son. Uh, <laughs> you ain't the first. That's rude, sir. That's rude. Um, the fertile soil of the island. Hmm. So, so fertile that it doesn't need to be watered, though? That's unusual. Alright, what do these guys have to say? Black chocobos were glorious birds born and bred in the forest. They'd only let you off in a wooded area. Anyway, they're extinct now. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, this is the item shop, yeah? Okay, nothing new. Let's see, do we want to stay the night? Um, yeah, let's replenish our MP. And then I don't think we need to... change jobs yet. So yeah, we'll just keep our jobs as they are. How close are we to mastering Ferris's Blue Mage? 125, 35 ability points. Uh, Bart's is... Okay. Smoke. Image. Okay. You've mastered White Magic level 5, and you've magic... Master Black Lad Magic level 5. That's fantastic. Okay. Um. Okay, let's keep wandering around while I gather my thoughts here. Chocobo Racing. <laughs> um. You're on to something there, young man. <laughs> uh, yes, they do. Um, it should be gold needles. Uh, so, yeah, fun fact. Uh, you're, like, your stone golems, and anything that's a stone, right? You can insta-kill it with, uh, with a golden needle. But the string just keeps on bubbling up. Obviously, these folks probably don't know about the sciences of, like, geothermic, geothermal dynamics and underwater rivers and all that stuff. Oh, is something underground? What's going on underground? Alright, let's check this uh, armor shop out. What do we got? Sage's Surplus. Um... Let's get one and see if it's an actual upgrade for, okay. okay, yeah, so it is for you. Okay, everyone seems to be rocking the, um, cotton robe. But you have the Kempo G. You don't need strength as a blue mage, so... Yeah, we definitely want a Sage's sur Surplice? Or Surplus. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's those robes that I think uh, Catholic priests or deacons wear. I think it's from the, the Catholic Church. Um, one of their garbs that they wear. Flame bow, frost bow, thunder bow. Or the silver harp. Um, do I want any of this? I've already stolen two silver bows. The question is, am I going to have a ranger for any fight that has elemental weakness? You know what I mean?
Let me look at my notes here in the future. Um, Flamebow might be my best bet. If, and that's a big if, uh, I decide to use Rangers. And I don't know, yeah, 2500 a pop, that's not worth it. It's not worth it. Let's see if we come down here. This is a fairly important little house to come into. So we talked to the the minstrel. Um, and we get Mighty March. Hooray! We know two songs now, right? I thought we knew two. Hmm. Yes, play the piano. Getting pretty good. All right, we know we've got a hang of our scales, it sounds like. So maybe next time we'll actually hear Bart's play a song. All right, um, let's make sure we've got all of our magic that we're up to date here. Yep, don't need to spend any money here. And let's, uh, let's see. We've already checked out our weapons, our armor, or yeah, weapons, armor, items. All right, so let's go ahead and leave town. Because we got, we got Mighty March, and uh, that's the most important part of going there. All right, look, it's the black chocobo. <laughs> and Bart is all for catching it. It's a black chocobo. Bart doesn't waste any time trying to domesticate it. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Something's wrong. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, what could it be? So if we remember, back when Castle Karnak exploded, those two crystal shards, which flew off screen, uh, sent them flying all the way over here. That's a long ways to... That's a huge trajectory. So what was the... Uh, well, okay, we're not going to even speculate. But anyway, we've got now the, the Bard and the Ranger abilities, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, that makes perfect sense. Um, he'll be able to fly with uh, four people on his back instead of one now that he's uh, cleared his gullet of uh, two crystals. Yep, <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Alrighty, we're going to go... Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and go to the Library of Ancients and we'll just call the episode. Um, this is a good, good breaking point, I think. Um... Let's see, I don't think there's anything, any other places to travel. Um, uh, 
Alright, let me think. Uh, oh, here comes Sid Mid. Ah, you back. Yep, we've been to the Crescent Island. And we lost the ship. Sorry, we only had it for like an hour. If, however long it would have taken us. So, uh, apparently that's not a big deal. Whatever, we'll just build a new one. <laughs> <laughs> As if the time factor of building a new one would, uh, you know, it's no big deal. Oh, they know where T King Tycoon is. Fantastic. He was spotted in Karnak. Desert of Shifting Sands. Beyond the dunes is the town of ruin. Um, no, it's the town of gone. It's the ruins of gone. Aha! Good question, Bart. Floating in midair. What? And Ferris is all for it. She's, uh, as usual, she's telling everyone to get her giddy up. <laughs> Let's check it out. Let's go. Okay, so. Um, alright, yeah, let's just go ahead and save, and then, um, in our next episode, uh, we'll, first, before we go to the shifting stands, we'll take a couple of sidetracks, we'll go, um, We'll go up to the Istri area, we'll go down to the Jekyll, Jackal area, and then we'll proceed forward. So, um, until our next episode, so long for now. <laughs>